I believe that a child of God should be a giver. I believe that a child of God should be a giver. Our example of who we should emulate should be Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ was a giver. Not a taker, but a giver in all aspects of his being. He gave of himself. <coughs> Those of us that believe in God should be givers. Not only of our resources, but of our selves. Tough times and big decisions are often opportunities to grow. Grow in our faith and in our and in new ways of trusting Him. There are some things that cannot come out of us unless they are pulled out of us. And normally that comes through tough times. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Sure do. There are things that you didn't even know you were capable of <coughs> until you were put in certain situations. Mm -hmm. I believe God wants to take care of us as his word promises us. But I know you have heard me say many times, when you act like you don't need God, oh, you don't get God. Say it again. You don't get God. And I have said that many times. I've also said God can heal what you won't even admit is broken. Amen? God cares for us. But how much are we really willing to trust him mm -hmm. and not lean on our own understanding? The scriptures say, trust in the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And do what? Lean, lean not, not on your, on your own, own understanding. But in all your ways, okay. do what? Okay. Acknowledge him. And what he will do? Direct your path. Direct your path. This is the word. But when you act like you don't need him and you don't trust him, then the kind of direction that he has promised you won't get because you're too busy directing your own self. And God is not going to fight with you for that position in your life. <laughs> Amen? Amen? You got to give it to him. The Bible says, seek him and he will be found. Knock and what? Well, if you don't knock on the door, how much of seeking God first do we really put into practice? And our actions will always speak louder than our words. We have to grow to the place of having a single focus on God as our source, no matter what. I want us to turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. And we, these scriptures are here for us. But how many times do we read these things and trust what they're saying? Matthew chapter 6, I'm going to read from verse 24 to 33. Matthew chapter 6, oh. verses 24 to 33. 
No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Amen. Now, when you see the Bible writes in red, who's speaking? Jesus. Right. Verse 25, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns. For your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you want. Your Bible say want? Need. Need. It doesn't say want. It says need. It says need. He will give you everything you want need not everything you want need our actions like I said will always speak louder than our words when we have problems with marriage jobs, kids, relationships we must learn to see God as the source to fix it the world will always have opinions to fix stuff. How to handle marital problems, how to deal with rebellious children, anger management, how to handle your finances, how to find a mate. You got all these things. Beginners for dummies. You know that's what they say? <laughs> they always got a solution, the world. But it's all an attempt to replace God. The world is saying, we can teach you how to take charge of your life and make things happen for yourself. We can give you the tools you need to be the person you desire to be. Whenever you want to teach, whenever you, whatever you want, we can teach you on how to get it done. They can teach you how to be the master of your own Destiny. That's what they put out there. It's all over social media. When money becomes our focus, we give it the strength to control us. We have the greatest power in the world, and that's the power of choice. Mm -hmm. But we only have the power until we choose. Then we turn the power over to what we have chosen. So if it's money, then money will control. Mm -hmm. Whatever you make your main focus, mm -hmm. you give it strength. Do you hear me, family? Mm -hmm. God wants to take care of us, but we have to give him permission to do it. God is not going to fight to take care of you. I have told you many times in past um, sermons that God responds to capacity and need. Meaning, if you don't need him, then you won't get him. You have to seek after, sought after, he comes after you and presents himself that you have to accept. And you have to make room for God. Are you all hearing me, family? 
You have to make room for God. Just like you make room for everything else in your life. And the thing that you give the most room to <laughs> will have the most control. Oh. Are you hearing me? Many people want God to respond to wants. But he responds to needs. Many things that we ask for, we don't really need it. We want it maybe because it's fashionable at that time. Or someone you know has it. Even at the cost of going beyond your means. So you ask God to help you to get something for the wrong reason. We recently talked about the goodness of God and His amazing love for us because that is who He is. But we also recognize His love for us has boxed Him in into doing what is best for us. Amen? He can't go beyond it. Remember, I just preached about this. He's locked in to His Word and who He is. God is a gentleman, and he is not going to compete with you. The Bible says in the Old Testament that God is a jealous God. Amen? Amen. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. We make things idols. And we worship at their altar. Mm -hmm. And it can take the form of many things. You all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But he knows when that thing has a bigger place in your life than him. God is a gentleman. If you are going to seek God, then the Bible says, seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. But if you decide to handle your situation your way, then God is not going to compete with you. But if you decide you're going to practice seeking God, leaning on Him, you're going to ask yourself a question during a difficult time. Am I going to trust God in this situation? There's always a temptation to complain about something or express a fear. But at some point you will have to grab hold of those emotions and say, God, I trust you in this moment. I don't see how I'm going to get out of this. But I believe you in this situation. Help me with my faith. I just preached the other day. God help my unbelief. The thing that concerns me the most when I say trust God is. We use this expression so much. It has become almost like a cliche. And the second you say. Do you trust God? Oh I trust God. And we just pass it off so easily. But remember the story in the Bible when Jesus took the rich young ruler and said, let me find out just how much you really trust me. Sell what you have and give it to the poor. Lay up treasures in heaven and come follow me. Remember, this guy in the front of everybody looked like he was following God. And he had it down, packed. But Jesus says, I'm really going to show you where your real trust is. It's in money and your possessions. So we're talking about trusting God. And God says, if you can't trust me in the little things, which to God, money is a little thing. How can you trust me in big things like your life? 
healing of sickness, repairing of relationships, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. Money is a big deal with us, but it's not a big deal with God. I need a reader. Luke chapter 16, verse 10 to 13. What does it say? Luke chapter 16, verse 10. Reading 10, 11, 12, 13. Go ahead. If you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? And if you are not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with the things of your own? Right there. You all just read that? That's in the book. If you can't be trusted with little things, how can you be trusted with big things? If you can't be trusted with financial things, mm -hmm. how can he trust you with more? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you can't be trusted with other people's things, how should he give you stuff on your own? This is not about proving to God that you trust him. God already knows if you trust him or not. This is about proving to yourself if you trust him. The reason why it may seem other people are more blessed from God than you are is because they are prepared to do what you're not prepared to do. They're going to depth in God. You're not willing to go. If you want the kind of faith that they have but are not willing to go to the depths they went to in order to get it, then you're not going to get what they get. Amen? Until you authentically trust God, you're not going to receive God's best for your life. That story about the rich young ruler is an example to us. Where his heart was. Oh, he knew Jesus. But he trusted in his riches more. Jesus knew he would be willing to trust money more than trust him. And that is why Jesus says, you cannot serve two masters. So in order to prove you trust God, you need to be a giver of the resources and blessings God has given you. Because at the end of the day, everything you have is because he gave it to you. I'm going to say that again. Everything you have is because he gave it to you. If you're willing to part with the thing you've trusted most, that's when God is saying, I know you're willing to trust me. God wants to know you trust him. He wants to be your supply house. He wants to be the one that takes care of all your needs. That brings him great joy. What grieves him is when he sees you are prepared to do what you feel you need to do to take care of your own needs and take him out of the picture. When you do that, you don't allow him to do what he can do for you much better than you can do for yourself. Amen? That is one of the reasons why we need to renew our minds to the place where we automatically go to God for everything. This is the place he wants us. Renew the spirit of our minds to focus on God in everything. 
That's where he wants us to work towards. Practicing constantly to focus on God as an automatic thing. Do you all hear me, family? Focus on God as an automatic thing. When I first started to learn how to drive, I learned in a stick shift. You all know what a stick shift is, right? You all may have a different word for it, but... But I, we shift on this. I'll stand with this on this side, so we shift on this side. But you put the clutch in, and you shift. Right? What do you all call it? Okay. Good. Good. Anyone who, who, learn, who, who knows how to drive a stick shift knows that you have to learn to do it. And going off is a difficult thing. You could tear up a transmission. <laughs> or drift backwards and take out the 10 cars behind you. <laughs> you know. But as you, as you start driving, every time you shift, you look down to make sure you're sticking in the right pedal and you're shifting in the right gear. But as you get better, it becomes automatic. You don't even look anymore. You just automatically stick that clutch in and shift. It becomes automatic. You stop at a stop sign. You don't have to look where first is. You pull off. You go down your gears. You just know what to do. You don't think about it. You just do it because it's an automatic thing. That's what I'm talking about. That's what God wants from us. Can we get ourselves to the place where we automatically lean on God without having to think about it? Without having to think, can I trust him? <clears throat> you just shift into that mode. That's where he wants us to be. Can we get to that place without having to think about it? To be confident that he will do what he says he will do. He will be who he says he will be. I'm saying to you this morning, if you can accomplish that, then God will assume the responsibility of taking care of you. It will become his responsibility. Children don't wonder if parents will take care of them. It's not even something they think about. They just know that's what mommy and daddy can do. They want something. They go to mommy and daddy. They have problems. They go to mommy and daddy. They have a situation that needs to be taken care of. They know mommy and daddy can do it. It's not something they sit down and wonder and have conferences in the bedroom. You think mommy and daddy can take me to the doctor? I'm bleeding. <laughs> it's an automatic thing. Do you all understand what I'm saying? This is what he wants from us. It's not something they even contemplate over. They know it. It's what parents do. That's what God wants from us. And that's ultimately what we want from Him. Don't allow your fears and past failures and all of what you can and cannot do, your guilt, your condemnation, what your friends may say, get in the way of what God is doing in your life. Amen? Mm -hmm. We want to work towards training in trusting God until the spirit of our minds are renewed. That automatically we will know God will assume responsibility and take care of the situation just like parents do for their children. We want God to do it. And I'm not just talking about financial things. I'm talking about in everything. When there are disagreements between a husband and a wife, trust God. Trust God. Don't trust your friends. Trust God. God can do supernatural things in the lives of relationships. God can get in the middle of it and change things if we will only trust him in all things.
things. Supernatural forgiveness in areas only God can provide. Parents have to learn to trust God where their children are concerned. Sometimes parents get in the way of what God is doing in the lives of their children. Certain things start happening and rather than trust God in that situation, you jump in and get in the way. We have to remember that yes, they are your children, but they're God's children as well. Amen? Amen. Sometimes because of past fears, you lack the trust that you need in God to handle certain situations. So you get in the way. But if we believe that our steps are ordered, then trust God even when you don't see or understand how it will happen. Are you all hearing me, family? How it will happen. Don't allow what you see to distract you from what you know in respect of trusting God. That is why we need to read the Word. Yes. Because the Word tells us and gives us principles that we need to put into practice. And you don't go on what you think. You go on what you know. And what you know is that God's Word is true. Yes. And what He says will come to pass will come to pass. As humans, we have such a need to be in control and to understand everything. And we box God in to our understanding. And we tend to forget that the Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Are you all hearing me this morning? Don't forget your faith. See, that's what the enemy wants. He wants you to see this thing so big in the front of you, you forget God's word. And you have to be intentional because we have a sinful nature. And that sinful nature has done a work on all of us. We want what we want. Amen? Amen? So when that situation comes, rather than trust God and put his word into practice and watch God work through that situation in your life, we tend to want to fix it right then. We don't even consider God. Amen? And God does things through situations. Teaches us through situations, strengthens us through situations. Sometimes, like the Bible says, in some things, you just have to stand still. And what? Wait. What else? Be patient. What else? Pray. Oh, come on. See what? <laughs> See the salvation, the salvation of the Lord. The Amen? Amen? Thank you. I remembered it. I just got it. But our problem is that standing still, that don't come easy. Many of us want the laying on of hands ministry. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we want the laying on of hands ministry. <laughs> We think it'll get stuff done quicker. But, get to the place automatically where if God brings you to it, bring it through. See, we know. <laughs> we know. But we still can't wait. You are a child of God. And anything that comes your way after that is for you. <laughs> he allowed it for some reason. Either to teach, either to make you grow, either to increase your faith. It is always for your betterment. He didn't put you in these situations to kill you. 
Because if he wanted you dead, he'd have killed you when you wasn't even thinking about him. Mm -hmm. He ain't gonna kill you now that you come to him. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to get better, now it's time to, to let you have it. Mm -hmm. And that is why we have to change the way we think. Mm -hmm. Because the enemy wants us to see it that way. When the difficulty comes after accepting Christ, for you to question, God, why are you letting this to happen to me now? I thought you were supposed to be taking care of me. Amen? But if you change the way you think, then you realize the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. This is the route you need to come for his best in your life. You may not understand it now, but the songwriter says, we will understand it better by and by. Many times, and I'm sure that many of you have experienced this, we go through difficulties and we don't understand it when we're in it. And he brings us through. We learn some things. We experience and mature in our patience and waiting. And we grow mm -hmm. in the situation. And then a couple of years later, you get in another situation and you realize, had I not gone through that two years ago, I wouldn't know what to do now. Are you all saying, hearing what I'm saying? We all go through stuff. But if we change the way we think, we'll trust God in everything and wait on Him till our change comes. The Bible says, don't get weary in well-doing. <clears throat> For things will change if you faint not. Mm -hmm. So if you believe that our steps are ordered, then trust God in everything, mm -hmm. even when you don't understand. Remember, we are dealing with a God <laughs> who spits in the dirt, make mud, wipe it on a man's face, and he see. Now, if you don't trust God, you ain't gonna let nobody spit and put dirt on you. Because the word says that's unclean. Everything is about hand sanitizer and everything now. Amen? Amen. So it might not happen the way you want it to happen, but when you trust God, be open for the way God can do stuff. Because that man, if he had said, stop, I don't want you to put dirt on my face, he'll be blind now. <laughs> Amen? This is what I'm talking about. Without faith, it's impossible. Trust God even when trusting doesn't seem to be working. Are you hearing me, family? Blind faith. And many of you know God has brought you through situations when you were in it. You didn't see no way out. But you're out. <laughs> you decided, I don't know how I can do this, but God, I trust you. So I'm just going to sit back and Jesus take the wheel. Because, you know, we got plenty of boxing drivers. <laughs> That's right. Amen? Take the wheel. And this is what I'm saying. We have to be careful. Because sin is subtle. It'll take over. That's that selfishness in all of us. We want what we want. And that's why we got to die daily to self. Because everything we want for us isn't always good for us. That's right. But letting go of it for God's best, I am telling you this morning, will work for you as a child of God. Amen? Amen? So when I use the word trust, it's not just in a religious sense. Excuse me. I want us to renew the spirit of our mind so we can see what God wants to do in areas of our lives where we have been turning to our own strength. Are you willing to let go and let God? Give God the opportunity to assume responsibility for the care of your life. And this is in all areas. 
financially, relationally, emotionally, all areas. Anybody knows off their heart what First Peter 5 and 7 says? Cast your cares on him for he cares for you. He wants us to cast our cares on him. I believe as we cast our cares on him, we now give him opportunity to assume care for us. We've given him something to work with. And really that's what we're looking for. God taking care of us. Isn't that what we really want? We want God to take care of us. But you know, I could talk forever about how powerful this really is. But it's really going to be up to you how much you're going to trust God in all areas of your life. Are you a giver? Or are you a hoarder? Mm -hmm. Are you asking God to give you so you can keep for you? Or are you asking God to give you so you could be a blessing to others? Amen. It's something to think about. When I say trust God, yeah, 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 I trust God, I trust mm -hmm. God. Listen, family, to me this morning. Mm -hmm. This is not just a religious saying. Mm -hmm. I am telling you, that if you really trust God, he will take responsibility of taking care of you, of your life. Trust God. Trust God. Trust God. Because the reality is, if at this point in your life, you have been taking care of yourself without really trusting God. And things have been good. Just imagine how much better they would be if you trust Him. Amen? Because He could do so much more than you can or I can. Trust God. The Bible says if you can be faithful in little things, how can he trust you with big things? God does not have a problem with money. God does not have a problem with riches. I need a couple of readers. What does Proverbs 10.22 say? We know what Matthew 6 and 33 says. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And live right, and his righteousness, and he will give you what you need. What does Proverbs 10 and 22 say? The blessings of the Lord brings wealth without painful toil for it. The blessings of the Lord brings wealth without painful toil for it. And that is simply saying, the blessings of the Lord, when it brings the wealth, you have peace with that wealth. But when you do it yourself, you could bring some problems on yourself. Because you could bring wealth on yourself by selling dope, but then you're running from the police for the rest of your life. Now you have the wealth, but there's no peace there. Do you all get what I'm saying? But when God gives you the wealth, you could lay your head down, go to sleep. When God gives you the wealth, you could give some of it away and don't worry about it. And be a blessing and feel good about being a blessing. And don't look for nothing in return. But that's God given. There's a difference. Peace comes with that. I want to read 1 Timothy chapter 6. And I'm going to read verses 9 and 10. And it says... It's 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. But people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. 
See, that's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You want it, and you're greedy, so you go after it all kinds of ways. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered far from true faith and passed themselves with many sorrows. Amen? That's when you go after it the wrong way. I want, I want, I want. Gimme, 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 gimme. Let me do this. Let me do that. This scheme come up. I want to do that. Next game come up. I want to do that. How else I could get some quick cash? Amen? I believe we need to trust God in everything. Now, as human beings, we need to be careful and not confuse temptation with opportunity. Don't confuse temptation with opportunity. Because you may want something and you may see it. And it may seem mm -hmm. like a good opportunity. But your lust mm -hmm. for wealth and getting a quick fix scheme, <laughs> you rush into that. Mm -hmm. Amen? Next thing you know, you're in problems. Trusting in riches and wealth is wrong. <clears throat> Trusting in riches and wealth is wrong. Greediness is absolutely wrong. I want, I want, I want. Someone not too long told me you could never have enough. <laughs> and, he, and he's a millionaire. Wow. He's saying he can never have enough. But you know, that's the truth. If you don't be careful, that's why you got to have God boxing you into some principles that's going to lock you down. Because the kind of freedom that we have, we got to be careful. Very careful. You know, when you really put your mind together, and this is what God has given us, and this is why we need to be locked into certain things. Because when we really put our minds together, there's really nothing we can't do, you know. Remember the story in the Bible of the Tower of Baal? God had to actually shut that down. <laughs> Because the people decided to work together and they were building something that went up to the heavens. If we do not put the principles of God into practice, there are schemes and things that we can be creative and come up with <coughs> that will get us wealth. But is it what God really want for us? We read in the Bible where it says you cannot serve both money and God. Can we enjoy both God and the correct bounty of this world, which is money? Of course we can. Yes, we can. Because there's nothing wrong with money. It's the root your motive, what you're chasing after, for what? Mm. Now, talking about money and giving and all of that guarantees some intimidating reactions. Mm. People don't want anybody messing around in their private world. And money definitely is private. I thought I was going to get an amen, but there was silence. So that <laughs> amen. <laughs> that must be hit a spot. <laughs> Nobody don't want their money to be funny. That's right. right, Angel? Right. <laughs> <laughs> don't fool with money. 
<laughs> Get it right. <laughs> Let's be honest. It's true. Because we all feel that way. You go in the food store, and she give you the wrong change. You say, hey, 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 let's fix this. You give me the wrong change. You don't walk up and say, oh, you can keep that $6. Oh. The devil is a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Amen? Amen? Yeah. Th th this is where we live. Mm -hmm. But pastors, when we talk about money, We touch on the nerve. Amen? Mm -hmm. Even though the book say what God requires. And I have been told on occasion, I don't talk about money enough. I ain't going to call no name or who is telling me that. <laughs> and y'all know I don't talk about money I feel as if I try to steer y'all towards the word of God and you need to read God's word for yourself you know? so you can find out what God requires I don't believe in Making people feel like I want to beat them down to do what God to do what God is requiring of them. Amen. But I don't apologize because I love you too much to withhold God's truth from you, even at the cost of your rejection. God requires that you give. Because he has no hands but yours. Mm -hmm. He has no feet but yours. And he can't use no money but yours. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So there's a principle in the book that tells us what he requires of us. And I think all of you know that God requires that we give mm -hmm. to his ministry. Amen. Amen? And that's a personal thing. That's between you and him. But I do believe that as a believer, you should be a giver. And it's not only finances. It's your time. It's all sorts of things. Amen? Amen. I love you, but God loves you more. Amen. And we need to be obedient mm -hmm. to the word. Now, do I love money? If I answer truthfully, my answer would be yes. I would love to have savings in the bank. Cash in my wallet. Investments yielding returns. I love the options that money gives me. The security that money provides. And I hate the anxiety that accompanies the lack of it. Mm -hmm. I'm just being honest with you. So what's the solution? Mm -hmm. I ask the Lord to uproot out of my heart mm -hmm. the love for money. Mm -hmm. And to seek Him. Mm -hmm. And to be as generous as I can. Not only with my finances, but with my time. And that's why when I'm called upon any hour, I will get up and go. I will pray with the sick. I will do funerals. I will do weddings. I will go and be with people and visit. Constantly giving of my time. Because at the end of the day, it's not about what you have. It's about what you do. With what you have. Amen. 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 And people will always remember. What you did. Mm -hmm. For them. Mm -hmm. And we're not just talking about money. We're talking about the time you spent. Mm -hmm. Taking away your time. And going and visit. Mm -hmm. These are the things that I ask God to give me grace. Give me mercy. And I've found it to be a powerful antidote God's prosperity is measured not by what you have 
but by how much of a blessing you've been. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. There are people who have made thousands of dollars and at the end of the year they can't show you nothing they've done with it. Mm -hmm. So it can't be about what you make because plenty of people just make money but it's about what you do with the money. Amen? <coughs> So in our decision making, especially when it concerns money, let's remember the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so, so he shall is become. he. Mm -hmm. Galatians 6-7. Mm -hmm. Let us remember, seek God first. He wants to take care of you. We come here, don't take this for granted. This has to be paid for. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. This has to be paid for. And many of you all know, I am been, being taken care of. You are also being a blessing to me as pastor. And I'm not telling you what you should or shouldn't do. But in your giving, your giving takes care of feeding the seniors at the Senior Citizen Center, blessing people when they need help, helping with funerals, all sorts of stuff. I'm constantly taking flowers to people in the hospital, in their homes, and a lot of things that y'all don't even know. But this ministry bless people. Do you all hear me? And it's because of your giving. I want to thank you for your giving because it has been a blessing to this church. Right. And I hope in 2024 you continue mm -hmm. to be a blessing. I, I want to thank those who brought food for us and we're going to in the next few weeks. I, that is really appreciated. I know um, it, it makes a big difference. It, it really does. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yes, all the ladies who have come together to do a meal plan for Betty while she's re recovering from her surgery. Mm -hmm. It's a blessing. These are the types of things God wants from us mm -hmm. to give of ourselves. Amen? Mm -hmm. Give of ourselves. So at the end of the day, it's going to be between you and God how you give. Mm -hmm. Because either you're going to be a giver or you're going to be a taker. Amen? Now, don't let the enemy fool you like there's an in-between. <laughs> the Bible says, I would that you rather be what? Hot or cold. And that's what the Bible says? Because what happens to people who are lukewarm? And I don't think being spit out is a good place. I don't know how to make that nice. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> yeah, but I don't think vomit is nice. <laughs> how do you make that nice? So I don't think any of us want to find ourselves in that position. These are things that we need to ponder personally. Amen? Ponder it. And thank God that he reminds us of these things. Because you can get so caught up in the day-to-day -day that you just slip away. And by the time you check yourself, you're so far from where you need to be or where you used to be. And you need to take stock. Take inventory. If you become the master of your own life, leaning on your own understanding, then you've removed the opportunity for God to take care of you. Check your motive. Why you want to do what you are feeling you need to do. Be very careful of the influence of others in your life, in your decision making. Seeking God counsel is always good. And it's never a bad thing. Always remember, 
excuse me, that God is completely sovereign. God is infinite in wisdom. God is perfect in love. God in his love always wills what is best for us. And in his wisdom, he always knows what is best. And in his sovereignty, he has the power to bring about the change that we need in his life. So family, I'm asking you today to seek him first and allow him to supply all your needs. Amen? Amen. Put your hands again and give God some praise. <laughs> Seek God and trust him and he will take care of you. Please, 2024, it's time for us to get close to God. And we get close to God not only by accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior, but by reading God's word and finding out what he wants us to do. Because the more of that we do, the better we will be for him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for coming.